Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and I just wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about recovering from trauma and abuse. The most important thing about recovering from trauma and abuse is moving these things from inside of you and putting them outside where they belong. It's understanding that this was not about you. You didn't cause it. You didn't deserve it. It's not your fault. Put the responsibility for other people's actions where it belongs, on them. This burden of shame and guilt is not yours to carry, so you need to go ahead and put that down. Someone else's inability to hold it does not automatically make it yours. The next time you're blaming yourself for someone else's reactions or their behavior or you're internalizing someone else's actions, ask yourself two questions. Did this person have a choice? Could they have chosen to do something else? If the answer is yes, and it almost always is, stop blaming yourself. We all have choices about what we will do and how we will behave. Someone not wanting to take responsibility for their choice to behave a certain way does not somehow make this your fault. If you have trouble believing that or you don't think that's true, think about all the times you have treated people better than they have treated you. You didn't do that because of who they are. You did that because of who you are. You chose to do that because of who you are. Other people are the same. They choose to do what they choose to do because of who they are. This is very simple. It's very straightforward. You are not responsible for what other people choose to do. Other people are not responsible for what you choose to do. Everybody always has a choice. Take responsibility for the choices you have made, the things that you have done, and that's it. For example, If you call a person a disrespectful name, you're responsible for that. You are responsible for doing that. If they react to that by punching you in the face, you're not responsible for their choice to do that. If someone says you are, they're wrong. They had a choice of multiple things they could have done. That's what they chose to do. That's on them. The concept of each person being responsible for their own actions can be difficult for people to understand. We live in a culture where... There's ultimately one wrong person, right? Someone always has to be wrong, and then by default, the other person is right, or they're not responsible in this situation. People often automatically assume that if they're not responsible for the actions or reactions of other people, this means that they're not responsible for anything at all. That's false. We are never responsible for the actions of other people, but we are always responsible for our own. What does this mean in practical terms? It means that not taking responsibility for the reactions of the other person doesn't mean that you are refusing to take responsibility for anything. I hear all the time from people who don't want to accept the reality that we're all responsible for our own behavior and actions because they feel like that means they're not re- take, taking, excuse me, they're not taking responsibility for their stuff or that like they're blaming the other person. If you really think about it though, that doesn't make any sense. Not taking responsibility for other people's behavior doesn't mean you're not taking responsibility for your own. You know, if you're saying to someone, your reactions are your responsibility, that's not saying my actions are not my responsibility, right? So I want to make sure that that's really clear. Now, it can help us to stop taking responsibility for other people's actions by looking at it as a form of enabling. When we enable other people to behave in a toxic or an unhealthy manner, we're not helping them. When we take responsibility for other people's behavior or their reactions, they miss an opportunity to take responsibility for these things themselves. This is a missed opportunity for growth. You can't force somebody to be responsible, but you can stop making it easier for them not to be. Not only does taking responsibility for the behavior and choices of other people violate your boundaries, it violates theirs too. You are responsible for your behavior only. Your thoughts, your feelings, your actions only. They are responsible for their behavior only. When this balance is upset, boundary violations occur. Now, sometimes people ask, am I responsible for other people's feelings? The answer to that is no. 
you have a responsibility to other people's feelings, which means you have a responsibility to behave in a way that is respectful of them, but this is only within reason, and you're not responsible for them because you have no control over them and they don't belong to you. For example, blatantly insulting and attacking somebody is not behaving respectfully towards their feelings, and it cannot reasonably be claimed that it is, right? If you're dealing with a narcissist, this is very important to understand because they try relentlessly to force other people to take responsibility for them, for their thoughts, for their feelings, for their actions. If you know that you are behaving as respectfully and kindly as possible, but the other person is still saying that you're insulting them and upsetting them and offending them and belittling them or you're attacking them, this is not reasonable for them to claim. Don't allow yourself to be forced into taking responsibility for somebody else's feelings. This is always a losing situation because they don't belong to you and you don't have any control over them. It also violates your boundaries and theirs. Healing codependency and the wounds that come along with trauma and abuse requires practicing radical responsibility. This means that you only take responsibility for your own thoughts, feelings, and actions. It means that you stop trying to manage, control, or take responsibility for the thoughts, feelings, and actions of others, and that you stop believing they are supposed to do this for you. So what would that mean, or what's a good example of that? The dynamic we often see with narcissistic people is a very good example of that. The narcissist expresses the opinion that someone's not good enough or caring enough or compassionate enough or whatever they're saying. And so instead of taking this for what it is, which is the opinion of a person who has an agenda, who has perception problems, who cannot receive or understand love anyway, people immediately betray themselves or sacrifice themselves to keep trying harder and harder in an effort to change or control this opinion because they are seeing it as defining them or that this is about them somehow. It's not. It's about the narcissist or any other person. People's opinions and their feelings are based on a lot of things. Some of it's your behavior and some of it is not. So that's really, really important to understand. People pleasing is another good example. People pleasing is actually an unconscious attempt to manipulate other people into feeling about you the way that you want them to feel. It's an attempt to control their thoughts about you, their feelings for you, or their actions toward you so that these things will be how you want them to be. When this doesn't work, people often become very upset or very angry. The unconscious idea is, if I do all of these things for you, you have to love me or you have to accept me. If you don't, you're, you're hurting me, you're wronging me, you're doing something wrong to me because I deserve that for doing all of these things. I remember someone telling me about her relationship with a narcissist and she said that she kept telling him, I did all these things for you, I, I did all these things for you, how can you treat me this way? And he kept saying, I didn't ask you to do any of that. And at first she was struck by like, you know, this is so ungrateful, this is so horrible, but eventually she said she finally realized he was right. He didn't ask me to do any of those things. I did it because I believed that it would make him love me. Now, this was not her saying he didn't do anything wrong or that he was not responsible for his own behavior. It was her saying that the way that she was trying to address this problem was unhealthy and was not working. You know, if this is how someone behaves, instead of trying to fix or change or control it because we believe that we're causing it or that it's somehow about us, we need to really accept what this means, which is that this person is obviously not able to give you what you want, whether it's because they're doing something wrong or because what you want is just not something they can give you. Either way, you're not going to get it. To do these things, to overcome these things, to heal these things, you have to overcome any conditioning that tells you otherwise and learn to trust yourself to handle these things for yourself. This is not easy. It's scary. It feels like it goes against your nature. 
It doesn't, though. It goes against your conditioning. And the freedom on the other side of that is so much better than living in emotional bondage. So I hope that clears a few things up for you. May the Great Spirit bless you, and y'all have a beautiful day.